Thank you, Daisuki from Japan. It's good to be speaking about Sri Lanka at a time of political turmoil in our country, where a lot of misinformation and disinformation does take shape uh, naturally because of the political conditions in our country. So if you all remember, there was this viral um, hashtag, go to go home, that launched a massive public protest campaign led by young people in Sri Lanka. And uh, along with that, they used the internet very creatively, creating memes, uh, messaging, and using many platforms to connect with people and to get them to the streets and also to connect uh, with the protesters use, using multiple uh, multimedia platforms. So as Sri Lanka's youth got on the streets demanding political change and then into the Rajapaksha political dynasty, they also resorted to creating counter narratives naturally using the same tools. Uh, using social media and also using uh, mainstream media. Um, how did they try to do that? As young people gained momentum, the campaign got momentum. There was support within the country and from outside the country. They tried to discredit the campaign uh, as something that was foreign funded, a huge political conspiracy to oust them from power and to uh, install a different regime that would be probably pro-West and uh, you know, lean towards other political friends. To do that, uh, and they, they wanted sympathy, they were seeking uh, public sympathy because they, they really have lost uh, public support and uh, they still don't really enjoy massive public support. So to do that, they try to discredit not just the campaign, but also the individual campaigners saying that they also got uh, money and they were creating posts, fake posts about people getting money from this place, that place, so that people will stop believing in the uh, youth protesters. So while the Rajapakshas were using uh, Facebook groups and uh, other platforms to uh, sway public opinion and target individuals and discredit campaigns, there was also the role of the mainstream media that is really to be questioned because oftentimes we think the mainstream media is uh, not a main, a main vector in, and it also depends on the context. Um, of each, each of our countries. But in Sri Lanka, the mainstream also definitely played a role and has always played a role in creating uh, disinformation and mainstreaming the same. And they did this by pushing uh, narratives that were sympathetic to the Rajapakshas and portraying once again, the young protesters as lacking political vision and having an agenda to really, you know, make that change that they were seeking uh, through protesting. While the mainstream largely uh, did conservative narrative making, the state media definitely went overboard and tried to really create uh, narratives that are very uh, pro Rajapakshas. And they would also refer to the social media campaigns that were taking shape and discredit the same. So in that whole uh, misinformation, disinformation campaign, which is very natural when there is the information disorder and there is this kind of political situation, uh, I would like to say that the Rajapakshas probably lost something that they were very good at. They were very good at disinformation campaigns. But this time around, the young protesters probably won the day uh, with their creative campaigning tactics. But it continues. Thank you.